What up boys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're gonna look at something that I've been working on the last two days and I've live streamed every single part of it and that is what is the easiest way for people to obtain epic writing because right now in Wrath of Lich King pre-patch there's a ton of people who have boosted a tomb because they wanted to change class or maybe they're first coming back to classic right now they didn't have a max tune regardless it's swarming with boosted tunes and most of them don't have epic uh, writing so that's uh, what was the inspiration of this video because i got that question a lot so uh, i thought to myself like what could be the most secure way right obviously if you do grinding farm for like material or battle pets or anything like the prices on your realm, you have to take that into consideration. You have competition to take into consideration. So the easiest way to make gold for me was to do quests at max level because you get bonus gold rather than experience. So I did all of the best zones and I tracked all the numbers. So I have the numbers for the total amount of gold per zone, total, uh, well, the average gold per hour in each zone as well. We're going to look at that. Firstly, I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has picked up the complete gold guide for Wrath of the Lich King. The support has been insane and the feedback as well. So I really do appreciate that. We're still doing the massive sale on it for only $9.90. But you got to make sure you use the discount code SALE. And it's going to be linked down below in the description and pinned comments. And this is a book that I started to work on way before Wrath of Lich King Classic was even announced because it was pretty given that it was coming. And it contains all of the best gold farms to do in the Wrath of the Lich King. Best part about it, once you buy the book, you will get all the future updates done to the, uh, the book sent free to your mail. So uh, make sure to check it out with the link down below if you're interested in it. But yeah, I did this on my Boosted Shaman to have the uh the situation to be as realistic as possible because this boosted shaman he has the the glider mount he doesn't have epic riding uh obviously if you have epic flying you'll be able to do this faster and get a higher gold per hour right but this is the situation for most people wanting epic flying obviously they don't have epic flying so uh besides from that he is in brutal gear he does have like some green items his gear is not the best but i could easily solo most of the elite quests myself right? So uh, I did mainly, well, I only did, I started with Nether Storm because I've done this before, but for this video, I wanted some hard numbers, right? So I started with Nether Storm, then I did Blade's Edge, I flew down to Shadow Moon Valley, and then I finished off in Nagrand. Didn't have to touch Sangamarsh, Hellfire, and Taroker Forest. They're lower level zones, and you can expect to get roughly 1.5k gold, from these three zones, right? Meanwhile, I got exactly 4,270 gold from the zones that I did. You need 4,250 gold to buy epic writing skill, uh, but you can only get it for 4,250 gold if you're exalted with Stormwind or Auric Rimar. But it's going to be cheaper for you to buy Rune Cloth and hand it in for a Stormwind or Orogrimmar reputation to get exalted, then to pay the extra 750 gold for the writing skill. So keep that in mind if you're not exalted already. Uh, but those were the zones that I did. Now, I did the vast majority of the quests, 99%, but there's always some quests that's not worth doing. Like, this is a dungeon quest, obviously skipping that one. Uh, this quest right here, couldn't pick it up. Uh, and then you have this one, which you need to loot a bunch of prison keys and then you gotta open up some cages it's not time efficient at all so i also skipped that one and then there's a quest that you pick up in shat rat that will take you to this plateau to kill uh, a dude it was also just too time consuming going back and forth so it wasn't worth it in blade's edge i did pretty much all the quests uh, there's a couple of quests that i uh i skipped and that is um these quests right here, because one of them is just like the Ugari Law quest. There was no point doing it. But besides from that, I did every single Blade's Edge quest. And Blade's Edge, when we look at the numbers, it's going to surprise you a lot. It's a very good zone. Shadow Moon Valley is the zone that disappointed me the most. Uh, there's a lot of, like, I couldn't be arsed to do the escort quest inside the cave. It's just, it's too long. It doesn't make sense to do it. 
Uh, this quest as well. He wasn't up. I couldn't be ours to wait around. You also have to hand it in Hellfire, so it's quite the trip. And then this is a dungeon quest. And then I didn't do all of the, the Netherwing quests, because um, it you have to do a Sulud the Wacked, which is a group quest. Uh, it's no problem finding people to do group quests with, because there's so many people leveling up. But there wasn't at the time, and I couldn't be ours to do it for like 11 gold. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. This one you deliver in right here, but it's for one gold, so it wasn't worth the time. Nagrand, very good zone. So many people leveling there. A lot of quest hubs. I stopped. I still have some quests left to do in Nagrand, but I already had the goal, which was 4,250. So I didn't do the last couple of quests, but pretty much a full clear in Nagrand as well. I also vendored every single item that I got. Like the 4,270 gold is from... The raw quest from uh, looting mobs, the raw gold from looting mobs, and the raw gold from the quest. But I also picked the highest vendor priced item for every quest reward, and I vendored everything. Like, it hurt my soul, but I even vendored primals, nether weave cloth, everything that I could have sold in Yorkshire for more gold was vendored. Besides from a couple of items that cannot be vendored, right? So... Yeah, you're going to make more gold if you post the actual good items. If you have enchanting and you disenchant the quest rewards, you will make way more gold than I did. Uh, but uh, it was still enough to get me epic flying. Now we're going to look at the exact numbers. Uh, before we do so, uh, if this is the sort of content that you like and you want to see more videos like this one, including obviously Rat of Lich King Gold Farms, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload another video like this one. So, this spreadsheet, I noted everything on um, this spreadsheet right here, so you guys can see it. Started with Netherstorm, it took me almost 5 hours, 4 hours and 51 minutes, but I made 1,643 gold, which is an average gold per hour of 295. Not bad at all. And then Blade Sedge surprised me a lot. It took me 3 hours. I made 969 gold, and the gold per hour, 324. The reason for that is definitely because there's a lot of quest hubs in Blade Sedge. Like, you have this blade, this quest hub at Sylvanar, and then you have another one, like, right down here by the goblins, and then another one at Ruan Weald. And then there's so many elite quests in the middle right here, which is, like, 21 gold each time you hand it in. And they're super easy to do. So, um... Uh, Blade Sedge, great zone. It sucks without flying, but now we all have flying, so uh, it's really good stuff. And then Shadow Moon Valley, God, it was, it was, I mean, 225 gold guaranteed, not relying on the auction house. It's not too bad. A lot of people would be happy with that, but four hours for 902 gold. And there's so many people that believe Shadow Moon Valley is so good. But the fact is, once you do like the two main quest hubs, right? There's a lot of quests in the beginning. You go out, you do like five, six quests, you hand them all in, and then the amount of quests that you can do or pick up again is relatively low. So there's a lot of go and kill X, then go back to the quest giver, go and pick up Y, and then back to the quest giver. There's a lot of back and forth and a lot of group quests. So uh, not my favorite place to do quests. And even though you all the quests are high level, so there's a high amount of raw gold from the quests. And then Nagrand's, uh, it doesn't give you as much gold per zone, but it only took me two hours to do all the quests that I did. Made 756 gold, an average gold per hour of 378 gold. Almost 400 gold an hour guaranteed from Nagran. Now, that sounds almost too good to be true, right? But it all makes sense, because Nagran, like the Blood of Ring quest alone is like 100 gold or something stupid like that. And then you have all the elite quests that come from Nessingwary, which is also a huge amount of gold. And then you have Durin. There's just so many elite quests that give you a good amount of gold. All the quests, quests are really dense. So it's a great, great, great zone to do, uh, to do quests in for gold. But like, all in all, if we look at it, it took me 14 hours, pretty much on the minute, to make 4,270 gold. And the average gold per hour just doing quest was 305 gold. So pretty damn good making above 300 gold guaranteed per hour doing quest. And this is what I love about this is the fact that no one can be like, yo, student, I didn't make that much. 
which is it, it's almost impossible. The only variable that I can see from this is the green BOE items that you pick up when you kill mobs, but it's not going to affect your gold per hour by that much. Besides from that, if you're not able to pull 300 gold uh, an hour average, it's because you're killing or doing the quests slowly. I'm running this with the basic um, uh, quester add-on Questy, which everyone can download for free, and uh, that that's good enough. I, just, I don't do it in any particular order. I didn't min-max. Uh, I was lucky to have people uh, like that needed to do the quests or people nearby in my guild that could come and help me with the quests, but it was no problem finding people in the general chat to do the elite quests with. And to be fair, most of the elite quests can be done solo. They're easier than you think. Uh, some of them have even been nerfed. Like you can do Durin and Nagran the two man. Easy. Uh, no biggie whatsoever. If you play something like a Death Knight, you could probably easily solo him. That was, however, the end of today's video. So a big thank you for watching the video, as always. And if you got any questions, just leave them down below. Uh, don't forget to check out the complete gold guide for Wrath of the Lich King now that it's on sale. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all back in at tomorrow's video. But until then, bye-bye.